Did you know that the space shuttle Atlantis only had a one in three chance of taking off on its final mission? Standing a mere 400 yards away on a hot, muggy day in July, there she was, in all her glory. Me even being at the shuttle launch was a fluke in itself. Less than a month earlier, I had re received an email from NASA informing me that out of 5,500 people who applied via their Twitter contest, I was one of the 150 selected to attend the final space shuttle launch. So here I am in the stifling Florida humidity with 150 of my newest, closest friends, and Mother Nature decides that she has other plans. It wasn't just raining, it was pouring, and thunder, and lightning. If you gave us a couple more hours, I am pretty sure we could have started lining up two by two in front of an ark. And to top things off, a little later that afternoon, lightning struck less than a mile from the launch pad. I went home that night, I tried to fall asleep, and the only thing that kept going through my head over and over and over was what NASA told us a couple hours before. Due to weather, Atlantis only has a 30% chance of launch. I couldn't sleep. So let me stop here for a minute. Most of you, some of you, all of you, are within a few years of graduating high school. Of those folks, I know, buddy, you're like, Psh, no, I'm, I'm way far away. But of you folks who are, how many of you, by a show of hands, know exactly what you want to do with your life? A couple? How many have no idea whatsoever? All right. Let me give you a little advice. Those of you who know exactly what you want to do, guess what? That's going to suck. Because the truth is that that's going to be boring. Life's about the thrill of not knowing what's ahead of you. Like, let's say, 15 jobs. When I graduated from high school, from then till now, I have had 15 jobs on purpose. Because that's what a career looks like nowadays. And they've put me in some really, really cool places, like standing on the field at the Super Bowl at halftime around 67,000 pumped up fans. And my job is to make sure that when the halftime show is over, everybody can get off the field in 30 seconds without getting anybody run over. It's harder than it sounds. Or another job, like being backstage at the Oscars and standing in line, which, you know, it sounds really glamorous and there's a lot of famous people, but when you're standing in line at the bathroom with A-list stars who write, direct, and star in all their own movies, it's really surreal. But let me give you a little tip. It's true. Everybody poops. Each job along the way prepared me for and contributed to who I am today. And the one I have now didn't even exist when I was your age. The job, the technology, even what I do in my day-to-day -day work. Things are going to change for you. And that's not only okay, it's pretty awesome. Each of the journeys I've had along the way and all of the experiences I have have prepared me for the one thing I never thought I'd have to face cancer. I've been lucky enough not to get cancer once, or twice, but three times, which is twice in the past year. The first one was malignant melanoma, again, and the second one was uterine cancer, which resulted in a full hysterectomy. Now, cancer once is sad. Cancer twice is pitiful. But cancer three times, that's just downright pure comic gold. That is the universe laughing its head off at you. As a friend told me, Kara, dear Lord, quit, can <laughs> quit hogging all the bleeping cancer. So sure, I could be a big jerk or a victim or just plain give up. You'd be hard pressed to find but somebody who said, I didn't have a right to. If there's anything that would screw up my life plans, it's a battle with my body's rebellious nature against nature. But, I mean, really, what would that solve? The quality of your character is defined by how you react when the going gets tough. It's that moment your body decides to take your womb at age 34 before you're able to have the kids that you want to have. 
but by being open to opportunities, you discover that the next amazing thing you would have never noticed if things had gone according to plan, like a chance opportunity to tweet your way to a live space shuttle launch. When I was growing up, I loved a book called Anne of Green Gables. I, I loved Anne Shirley. She was a redhead. She was misunderstood. She was really outspoken, and she talked a lot. I get her. She's my people. It's not what life holds for you. It's what you bring to it. So I charged forward with a positive attitude and a wildly inappropriate sense of humor, as you've seen. And I stand here, once again, cancer-free. <laughs> Thank you. So speaking of odds, let's go back to that space shuttle, that little thing that I saw. I awoke before sunrise, and my, here my housemates, they were out in the kitchen, it was a quiet chatter, and I smelled the coffee and I went outside into the kitchen, and I hear one of my housemates say, I can see stars. That means the clouds had lifted overnight, which meant we were clear for launch. So we all piled into our cars and we went over to Kennedy Space Center in the dark, and we passed hundreds and hundreds of cars that were lined up on the side of the road, securing their spots, because there was over a million people expected at the Space Coast to watch the final space shuttle launch. We passed them and we got to Kennedy Space Center. We stood next to the famous countdown clock, which was across the tidal basin from where Atlantis just stood so proudly in the pre-dawn light. I began to get nervous. For the adults that are in the audience, you know that feeling you get, those butterflies in your stomach the day of your wedding? It's kind of like that, and kids, you'll understand one day. So all the waiting and the not knowing, here we are. Atlantis is ready to launch. She's clear to go. So why don't we do the countdown together, everybody? Ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, louder, 4, 3, 2, 1. So how about that? <laughs> and there I was, 3.1 miles away, because NASA's very tactical, 3.1 miles away from where that happened. And at first, it's the, oh my god, it's happening right in front of me. But it's more than that. First, you see it. Then you hear it. Then you feel it. It's bright. It's loud. It's, it's the flames just blinding you with a little bit of heat, just so you know it's there. And then it's the crack of sound when she leaves the earth. A friend said, it's like the air itself is being ripped apart. But the craziest part is when you start feeling it, because it's waves under the ground, rumbling towards you, first in your feet, up through your body, and finally settling in your chest. That is the wildest thing. And I know, we live in California, right? Earthquakes. No, it's different, because it's so surreal. Tears sprung to my eyes instantly and uncontrollably. Tears of wonder, of awe, of joy. Sure, we've seen launches on TV, and you just saw it now, but I really think that we as a society have become desensitized because of special effects in movies. Thank you, Michael Bay. Desensitized to what something of that magnitude looks and feels and sounds like in person. There aren't adequate enough words in the English language to describe the sight of seeing people leave Earth 
right in front of you. Majestic and spectacular come to mind, but even those don't seem fitting for such an occasion. You know, watching Atlantis trail off into the distance, it moves you. And you realize, or at least I realized, that all these different pieces of my life are bigger than the sum of their parts. I'm who I am today because of, and not in spite of, all these experiences. So as you look at the stills of her taking off again, I implore, instead of being rigid and bound to some predetermined plan that you think your future's already laid out with, be open to new opportunities that come your way. The third of you who said you know exactly what you want, you got some work to do. But the rest of you, you are in for the ride of your lives, I promise you that. And no matter what life throws at you, no matter what challenges come your way, don't let anybody tell you that you can't do something or that there's only a slim possibility of reaching your goals. Whether it's getting that job, getting into college, or beating cancer, remember Atlantis.